Hello, MUS 2020 students. Today, we're looking at the drum rack in Ableton Live. Make sure that you've got a blank MIDI track and then drag the drum rack over to it from instruments. This opens a blank drum rack. It's basically a four x four grid that can be loaded with samples or different instruments, at least now. Um, it actually goes quite a bit higher or lower depending on what range you're in using the MIDI keyboard. By default, it starts off at C1 and goes to D sharp two because these are where the standard MIDI uh, drum notes occur. However, you might have to adjust your keyboard. If you're using the computer MIDI keyboard, you might have to hit Z a couple of times to get down. Right now I can see that I'm hitting a little bit higher by holding down a C and it looks like I'm about two octaves above. So I'll hit Z. Okay, now I'm triggering C2. And one more time. Okay, here we go. Now I'm in the right area and I'm triggering C1. So remember, you will have to hit Z to drop down so you can actually play these. But you'll also notice there's no sound. That is definitely a bit of a problem. So let's fix that. If you've installed all of the packs that came with Live, you should have a number of samples in the sample category. I'm going to click on that there. And here is where it gets complicated. I have thousands and thousands of samples. Way, way, way too much to actually uh, go through and look individually. So what I'm going to do is use the search feature to find a kick drum. Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. But you'll notice there are multiple hits here when it's previewing. So I can take that and drag it in there, but I'll have to do a little sample editing and grab the end flag so that it only plays the first one. Now, if I test this on my keyboard, we only have one hit. Pretty cool. I really like how that sounds, but now I need to check and see if we can get a snare drum and some other drums just so that we can have a standard kit sound. So aside from the kit, the next big thing is the snare. Okay, I like this one. I'm going to take this and we'll drop that onto D1. Again, this is based on the standard MIDI drums key map, which I will post as well. Now we're going to want to go up the rest of the white keys. Traditionally, there's going to be another snare on E1. Pretty cool. We'll use that. Followed by toms on F1, G1, A1, B1, C2, and D2. We'll just search for tom. So this is the standard uh, MIDI drum map. And then the sharps, which would correspond to the black keys on the piano, would be my metals. So symbols and such. So let's look for symbol or metal and see what we can find. There's the hi-hat. and a muted crash. That'll round it out nicely. Okay, 
So here is my entire kit. Oh, and I have solo turned on. I should probably turn that off. Pretty cool. So I've got a really nice rack that I can work with. The other thing I can do is if I want to, I can add effects to these individually. Each slot in the drum rack has space for effects. So if my reverb, for example, would really bring out a kick, I could apply it there. I think it would actually work better on the hi-hat though. So I'm gonna add just a touch of reverb by selecting hi-hat, grabbing reverb, and then inserting it right here after the sample, but before the end of the device. And I'll up the wet balance on that. I could also add things like a compressor to the bass drum, which is pretty traditional. And if I wanted to get a little bit crazier, I could add things like auto filter, auto pan, or even beat repeat to say the snare drum. Not really doing much, I'd have to play around with it and maybe do some side chaining, but you get the general idea. So once that's created the way that I want it, oh, accidentally deleted the entire thing. I just want to delete the beat repeat. Once everything is created more or less the way I want it, all I need to do is save the rack. So I'm going to go to the save icon and save it as a preset. Hit enter and it's saved. Now we're not entirely done yet. If you want to share it with people, you need to save your set, then go to the file menu and do some extra work. Under File menu, as always, we're going to go with Collect All and Save. But now, to make sure that we can share this with other people, we're going to do another thing. We're going to go to Manage Files. Over here on the right-hand side, we're going to take a look at what's here. It says that the current set is 13. That's because that's what I named it. The live set belongs to project 13, correct. And then manage user library. What we're gonna do is click on manage project. Here in manage project, we want to create a pack but first we wanna see if it's using any media files that we need. So there are no missing files. There are two files from the user library. There are 14 files from factory packs. Okay, I'm gonna collect all of those into a project and then hit collect all and save. Okay, those are now saved entirely in the project. From here, I'm going to go back to Manage Project and now create a pack. I'm going to call this the demo kit and save it with my project. This saves it as a .alp file that includes the drum rack and all of the sample files that have been used to create it. This ALP file can be shared with other people and imported into their user library, then they can save that drum rack directly into their copy of Ableton Live. This is really efficient for sharing things with each other, especially if you have a lot of files. 
like if you went on to freesound.org, to download random sound effects to create a sound effects based kit. I hit save. Oh, and it wants me to save it outside of it, so I'll hit save here. And it was successfully created. We're good. I can hit OK, and I'm done.